If you see a presentation about money, they'll tell you, ah, it started with people collecting seashells and, and whatever. Uh, essentially, collectability for tradability. There's actually no evidence of that. Like that certainly has happened at different places at different times, but um, those are just like the uh, Stone Age people that live today. Like you can go to Brazil, you can go to South Sentinel Island, and you can find people that don't really have a monetary system at all, and they simply trade the way they see fit. The actual oldest recorded history of money that we have comes from ancient Mesopotamia, uh, places like Ur, you know, the Hittite empires, Babylonians, etc. And they had complex systems of credit, debt, finance. Uh, they, they had situations where they may issue debt as money. They had things that sort of look like central banks. Um, of, co of course, this is mixed history. Come on in. That would be me <laughs> right there, please. <laughs> yes. So, so they would have had money that looked quite a bit like fiat currency today. And this is going back between five and 7,000 years ago, depending on the context. And they typically used a single ledger technology, which is essentially this was bought, this was bought, this was bought, this was bought. At some point in the Middle Ages, we don't know exactly when, it seems to have been developed in parallel in a few places like Florence uh, and Vienna and some other places, they came up with the concept of, of double ledger technology, which is still really what the banks and everything work on today. That's essentially, if there's a debit over here, it means there must be a credit over here. Everything balances. Similar to uh, some of the gray-haired folks may remember balancing a checkbook. Uh, that's the, the same kind of concept that you have an accounting for things where there is a debit and a credit and your accountant would be involved and, and all of that. Blockchain technology is the first actual application of a concept called triple ledger accounting. Uh, this was theorized by people like Ian Grigg, who's a, a computer scientist, still alive, he's a personal friend of mine. Uh, but he, he started talking about this in the 90s, about how there is a necessity for there to be a public network at which there is a, a global attestation of an accounting of events. And with that global attestation, it allows regular people like you and me to be able to say, okay, so it's not just HSBC promising they didn't launder a bunch of money for the, the Sinaloa drug cartel, but also I can prove whether or not they did. And that public attestation uh, was theorized needing what was essentially Bitcoin, which ultimately the world was given in 2009. So from 2009 forward, everything that happens on a distributed public ledger allows, there is the, the double, there's the, I've sent a payment to Brendan, Brendan received my payment, but there is the attestation by proof of work of the mining network that says, yes, we saw it, we're willing to sign it cryptographically, that we also saw it, and that, that the double part of it was a valid transaction. And then anyone can browse to the blockchain and, and see that that's there. Now that's about fraud reduction, uh, massive fraud reduction. Um, but also things like, um, not just fraud, but a lot of people are incompetent, do their books wrong by accident. Yes? So is it kind of like the, the ledger would act in the same way as the Essentially. Uh, uh, miners, so I run a mining operation. I, I call us, uh, we're a mix between an ISP and a notary. That's, that's precisely it. Andrew? And so as, as Robert was, uh, you know, el elucidating or illuminating for us is that we don't even know how the gold goes from the central bank to, you know, these things. It's, it's the same with the United States. You know, Donald Trump promised us Fort Knox would be audited. And then as soon as he was sworn in, it's like, eh, it's, you know, you're not getting the JFK files. You're not getting the Epstein files. We're not auditing Fort Knox. Like, back to, you know, let's bomb Iran, right? <laughs> so... And, and that's how it works. And it's funny because we know that that's what's going on. We know that if there was a public attestation of these things, it would probably be a revolution. And in fact, a lot of great thinkers have said exactly that. If we could see the history and the accounting for the Federal Reserve Bank or any other central bank in the world, we would revolt. And <laughs> I, think, I think that's really, that's the resistance to Bitcoin properly implemented. Uh, and this is why instead... People have been sold the bill of goods of just buy the ETF, uh, just buy, just let BlackRock custody it, just buy MicroStrategy stock. This turns it into an investment vehicle. It turns it into a speculative asset, which is very much less disruptive to the powers that be than 
our ability to, to interact with a cash system that can be audited by absolutely everybody. Because if we do business that way, if that becomes the liquid currency, if that becomes the currency of real business, governments then at a certain point are forced to participate in that economy. And really what we're seeing, I think if we look at the Tower of London and the history that we've learned, England or the royals of England really are just the people who have most recently conquered the damn place. And so then they, they force you to, okay, I'm the new king, here's my new crown, rub the oil on my chest and, and whatever, and if you disagree, we'll, we'll cut your head off. You know? And, and that's, that's the way the world works. And so with Bitcoin, it's, it's another one of those things. Bitcoin is like William the Conqueror saying, you know what, I bet I could. <laughs> and so that's, that's really what we're up against. So we are looking at something that is revolutionary, but not just as an idea. It's not revolutionary like the internet is revolutionary. It's revolutionary in the same way that the biggest empire in the world could become led by a completely different group of people over the course of a single generation if things are adopted. And so that's the importance of proper accounting. If we can account properly, we can completely change the global pillars of power. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs>